What's up guys, Rogue9 here and our belated analysis of the new guns in Rainbow Six Siege Operation Parabellum continues with an in-depth look at the sidearms available to both Maestro and Alibi. On the one hand we have the Keratos 357 and on the other the Bailiff 410. Which guns should you run in which situations and what are their individual strengths and weaknesses? Let's find out. Today's video is brought to you by Dr. Martello's Laser Eye Surgery. Are you tired of wearing glasses or contact lenses? Of course you are! So phone in today to make an appointment with the world-renowned Dr. Martello and get your corrective laser eye surgery at rock-bottom prices. Our patented surgical robot system, Maestro, will deliver quick results with a simple procedure that is almost pain-free. So don't hesitate, our phones are already ringing off the hook, so call right now to avoid disappointment. The Maestro system may cause intense pain, permanent eye damage, blindness or death. Patients will be required to act as hostages in live fire CTU training and will most likely end up being fused. Now over to the sidearms. Again, just like with the Italian primaries, comparing the two options is kind of challenging since one is a mini shotgun while the other a high-powered revolver. But let's just go over them one by one, starting with the Keratos 357. You may have seen my earlier video talking about this gun as strangely overpowered, so this will be a relatively quick summary. On paper, the gun looks very similar to the French LFP revolver with a 6-shot cylinder, 78 points of max damage and the ability to attach a laser. The Keratos does have pretty good recoil for such a powerful gun, thanks to the design that lets it shoot from the bottom chamber instead of the top, and that can be improved even more by attaching a muzzle brake. The hip fire radius is also relatively good and if you wish, you can also attach a suppressor with all the benefits and disadvantages that this brings with it. But all of these factors are minor. What really makes the Keratos the best pistol in the game right now is its insanely shallow damage drop-off. Between 12 and 22 meters, the damage will only fall from the baseline 78 damage to a minimum of 65 damage. And that means that you will need one headshot, duh, two body shots and no more than three leg shots against level 1, 2 or 3 armor operators at any distance. This makes this handy little revolver more powerful at range than almost every other weapon, including the DMRs. In fact, the only guns that can rival the Keratos at range are Glaz's OTS and the BOSG. And having said that, the OTS has just been nerfed slightly and I still need to test if this affects only the baseline damage or also the minimum damage as well, so the Keratos might actually now be even more powerful in comparison. So yeah, for some reason the Keratos has been modelled to be the most powerful long range weapon and the only explanation I have is that this has something to do with balancing the operators so that they can maybe use the ACS-12 shotgun and still have a long range capable weapon with them. Who knows? So let's quickly take a look at how this incredible long range power affects the time to take down an opponent and how that time stacks up against other guns in the game. As always, this stat assumes reliable upper body shots at maximum fire rate and for the Keratos it works out at 133 milliseconds against all three armor types at all ranges. Against level 1 armor opponents at close range this is already pretty impressive, although it is matched by quite a number of pistols and DMRs and even beaten by the C-75 and F2. Once you get to longer ranges though, the Keratos stands out as one of the best guns in the game as long as you can land your shots, especially when going up against heavier armor types. I guess the only balancing factor here is the lack of an attachable sight and the lack of full auto fire. Most players will still perform better with a main weapon, but if you have the skill to handle this hand cannon, it can play a significant role in your Maestro or Alibi gameplay. And with that, let's now take a closer look at the alternative option, the Bailiff 410 shotgun revolver. In principle, you might assume this gun to be similar to the ITA-12S used by the Spanish operators, but sadly, that is not quite the case. The Bailiff has a capacity of 5 shots, with each pellet of each shot doing 30 damage at close range, but... Since this gun is chambered in 410 rather than the 12 gauge of every other shotgun in the game, it only fires 4 pellets per shot instead of the regular 8 and this makes a significant difference as you can imagine. Recoil is pretty good and with no attachment option apart from the laser, there is also no possibility of improving the recoil in any way. One last factor of the Bailiff is that unlike most guns in the game, it comes with an optical pistol sight attached by default, just like the RG15 used by the Bossack sisters. 
Those are the simple facts surrounding this gun, now let's dive a little deeper into the hidden stats to see just how useful this gun is in combat. I already mentioned the 30 damage for each of the 4 pellets at close range, and this will reach all the way up to 5 meters. 30 damage is one of the lowest possible for shotguns, and on top of that there are only half the pellets, which means that the total damage output per shot of the bailiff is really really poor. The only redeeming factor here is the fire rate which should be around the 450 RPM mark, just like all other handguns, but I managed to measure it at up to 485 RPM and this elevates the gun's damage per second or DPS to a relatively respectable 970 from a purely mathematical perspective. The issue is that 485 RPM translates into just over 8 shots per second, but the bailiff's capacity is only 5 shots. So for the first time ever in Rainbow Six Siege, we actually have a gun where the capacity limits the DPS, so despite the great fire rate with only 5 shots, the actual DPS is a relatively modest 600 against level 1 armor. Damage drop off for the bailiff is between 5 and 21 meters and to be fair, that's relatively normal for shotguns in Rainbow Six Siege and even though the 12 points per pellet minimum damage is also shared by many other guns, it is still low due to firing half the pellets. So in terms of the combat capabilities of the bailiff, things are already not looking great, but wait, it gets worse. The reload time of the bailiff is quite ghastly at 4.8 seconds and there is no tactical reload so it will always be 4.8 seconds no matter how many shots you've fired. This is slow enough to rival many of the internal mag shotguns that need to be reloaded one cartridge at a time and definitely beats almost every other gun in the game apart from a couple of the machine guns. Not a great quality to have and it makes it all the more important that you manage to deal with any threat with your initial 5 shots. There are a couple of redeeming factors though. First off, both the hip fire spread while standing still and the aim down sight or ADS spread are very good indeed at only 80 pixels at a resolution of 1440p. That is 33.3% better than any other shotgun in the game for ADS and over 50% for hip fire, and is in fact so good that attaching a laser has virtually no impact on these scenarios. But a word of caution, the hip fire spread is only great when standing still. As soon as you are jogging, the spread opens up to a considerable 228 pixels, which is pretty much on par with many of the other shotguns, and you still have the issue of firing only half the number of pellets. The conclusion here is that if you're going to fire this gun while moving, make sure to ADS so that you can get the tight spread that you will need to compensate for the lack of overall power. And here there is another little bit of good news. I measured the ADS time of the bailiff at only 194 milliseconds, which is a good chunk faster than the other shotguns in Rainbow Six Siege, which tend to take around 300 milliseconds to fully aim. But even with the great ADS and stationary hipfire spreads, the bailiff will struggle to get you one shot kills. Even against level 1 armor opponents, you will need all four pellets to hit the upper body or head, otherwise, you will only do 90 damage or less. Against two armor ops, the max damage the bailiff can dish out in a single shot is 108 points, and against three armor, it's 96. Although, ever since Blitz was upgraded to a two speed op, the only three armors on the attacking team are Montagna, Fuse, and some recruits, so you won't run into three armors all that often. Nevertheless, I think the bottom line is clearly that you should never rely on the one hit kill capability of the bailiff and instead treat it more like a short ranged pistol. Spam the hell out of it when opponents get to within 10 meters or so and you will be fine. So in terms of combat capabilities, the choice is pretty clear. Why would you pick a 410 shotgun that is only reliable at relatively short ranges, when instead you can pick a hand cannon that is not only capable at close ranges, but one of the best long range guns in the game? But as we know, shotguns in Rainbow Six Siege are mainly breaching tools instead of weapons, so maybe it might be worth bringing the Bailiff in a similar capacity to the ITA-12S. Can the Bailiff be used as a pre-round prepping tool? Yes, I guess so, but only just. The reality is that the 410 caliber shots make really small holes in any walls, floors or ceilings you are trying to open up, and many times it will take two or even three full cylinders or more to create an adequate breach. Take into consideration the 4.8 second reload time, and you 
you may well end up spending 20 to 25 seconds just on one wall breach. This is horrendously inefficient during the prep phase, and if you're trying to create a quick flank route mid-match, sitting there for easily 10 seconds banging away at a wall only to end up with a crawl or crouch height hole is literally pointless. Sure, as a last resort when none of your teammates can be bothered to bring a shotgun and you really need to remodel the site, the bailiff can just about do the job, but literally any other shotgun would be a better pick. My conclusion for the bailiff as a breaching tool is a solid, meh, not worth it. And so to conclude, I think that right now the choice of sidearm for both Alibi and Maestro is pretty straightforward. You can pick the pocket sized DMR or the cutest little shotgun in all of Rainbow Land. Is the Keratos meant to be this powerful at range? I can't believe it, so my guess is that it will be nerfed at some stage, but even then it will probably still be a more reliable sidearm than the Bailiff, and unless the Bailiff's breaching capability gets a bit of a buff, my recommendation will always be the Keratos. As always, you can find all the raw data discussed in this video in my online spreadsheet, link in the description. As of right now, I've not added the recent balancing changes yet, but I will get onto those soon. And that's it. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode. But as we know, shotguns in Rainbow Six Siege are mainly breaching tools. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh -oh.